What if I spend one billion credit and then give it all away? Yoink. <laughs> oh my God, this is such a dumb idea. This is a brand new Forza Horizon 5 update. It includes a bunch of really cool things. This is the brand new Horizon story. Rami's racing history is officially here. Before we jump into that, we've got a bunch of new cars, some cool event lab stuff. This is the brand new Ugly Duckling, the 2021 BMW M4 Calm. I'm really hoping this thing has some cool customization. We will see. That's not all. Let's quickly jump over to the event lab see what some of the new updates are. There should be some new props in here hidden away. Let's see if we can spot some of them. These are the brand new Extreme E flag. Let me tell you some of the interesting things about this. Okay, moving on. There's the battery. All right, new props for the event lab. So before I waste all of my money on a car, I wanted to come out and try the new Horizon story. Hi, Rami. What's the plan? Beautiful Mexican supercar. Beautiful Mexican roads. We're looking good. All right, stay above 80 miles an hour in the vol. okay? I know the game wants me to drive three miles and go a roundabout route. It's not what we're about. Somehow, the designers reduced the weight by 65 kilos and increased the power to nearly 400 bhp. Then they lowered the engine by 50 millimeters to drop the center of gravity and improve cornering. <laughs> Cross the line. There's a couple of other things you can help out with. Wait, 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 wait. View leaderboard? 13th place in the world. That was pretty close. Okay. I think for the next mission, I need to go super try hard and I need to get a world record. Papa Fernando needs your help. Oh, okay. Papa Fernando. To be honest, though, it was me who needed your help, not Papa Fernando. <laughs> I can't fault that logic. Who are the other races? He just lied to you and you said, yep, makes sense. But this isn't really a street race. There's no checkpoints, just the finish line. So keep to the route and get there. I'm just saying there is no such thing as not having a race. We go uh, try hard. The production of the Beatles started in Mexico soon after seven of them finished the Carrera Panamericana. Before that, people were a bit worried about reliability, you see? We Mexicans love a good-looking car, but a car that can do work is better. By 62, the first plant had opened in Halostock, making 10 of them a day. We love that car. So another plant opened in Puebla in 1967, and in 71, El Bocho became the official taxi of Mexico. That is a great car. I think I have a brilliant idea for how to make this Horizon story better. All right, three stars across the board. Seventh place. Much better. Rami's a liar. He made me think Papa Fernando came back from the dead, got me excited, laughed at me, and then my character went, Okay, let's go for a test drive. I've got lots to tell you about Volkswagen Mexico. I can tell you about Volkswagen Mexico. If you own a Volkswagen in the United States, chances are it was made in Mexico. Uh, to, just, just to break it. What do you mean? The only way to actually tell where your Volkswagen was built is if you look at the VIN number. The first letter of the VIN number will actually tell you what country it came from. I'll tell you what letter mine starts with. My VIN number is W V W K. I'm pretty sure my Volkswagen was made in Germany? I'm pretty sure they made all the R32s in Germany, did they not? Anyways, long story short, other things about Volkswagens in Mexico you need to know. Uh, Volkswagens. Ah! Guys, I don't think I'm gonna get three stars. Papa Fernando ruined my drift score. All right, there we go, across the line. Sixth place in the world! I know you've got one of these, somehow. So you know a little bit about what you're in for. Uh, Von Gittin Jr. already gave me like the whole PR pitch when I unlocked this beach. thing originally, so stick not to worry. Okay, so for this one, I actually need to stick- How do you make it go around corners like that? I'm really asking. This is 2021's EV of the year. What amazing timing! And I'm telling you all of this because the Mach-E was built right here in Mexico at Cuauhtitlan Assembly. Wait, really? 
I didn't know that. It will give you over 300 miles of range on a single charge. The performance GT version. Those subtitles didn't match up to anything that he just said. There's also a typo there. There's no space after the period. And when you get into tuning, you can basically tweak every one of the seven engines individually. I think Ford should make a left wheel drive Ford Mustang mach -E. There's one more thing to look at. I'll let you know as soon as I have a... Uh... Found it. Our final mission is... Oh, in Guanajuato. This beauty got her name from the Carrera Panamericana. The races don't run anymore, but who can blame us if we take it out one more time? I have no idea what we're... Oh, hello. There's Jamin. Guess he wanted one last race. Hi. <laughs> Bye, buddy. Whoa, this thing's got some sick upgrades on it. I also love the color. The color looks absolutely fantastic. I am sending it now. See, as long as I'm not doing a skill points challenge, I can drive just fine. Five miles to, wait, what? 132 competitors, and everyone turned up. Amateurs to F1 drivers, men, women, professionals, anyone who had a car. There was no speed limit before 2012, and you'd see cars doing 180 miles per hour. Not that I know anything about that. 2,178 miles of the Pan American Highway run through Mexico. The race itself had nine stages and lasted five days. Bro, that's actually sick. The winner of the very first Carrera Pan Americana was Herschel McGriff, who drove an Oldsmobile 88 at an average speed of 88 miles per hour. I'm one surprised an Oldsmobile won something. And two, I'm surprised an Oldsmobile can do 88 miles an hour. Here we go. Easy claps on the three stars with the Porsche. This is Jamin's exit. It's been fun, my friend. Take care. Great race. Almost like we did a little Panamericana with a friend. Anyways, hope you had fun with this little stroll through cars hechos in Mexico. It was great. And let me know if you were... Uh find any other cars like that very cool story wait i arrived in a two minutes 52.9 if i open up the leaderboard uh world record pace i was absolutely lightning quick that was insane i literally did it first place and the game just said no you <laughs> these are all of the accolades so you can get some clothing you can get a Myers Manx Forza edition, that's pretty cool, and a legendary cap. I'm not gonna lie though, that was actually probably one of the best Horizon stories we've had in this game so far, so well played. I'm just saying, if the writing continues to get better and we keep getting better stories where you're not the Horizon superstar, and the game just tells you actually useful things, then well played. When I was going through all of the new cars, one of the cars that I didn't show off at the start of this was one of these. This is the 1955 Mercedes-Benz 300 SLR, and it's sort of kind of the world's most expensive car. For those of you who don't know, back in June, the 300 SLR Uhlenhout Coupe sold for $143 million at auction, making it the world's most expensive car by actually nearly double. It's not this version. For the purposes of this video, it is this version. You can buy this thing for 143 million credits in the game. And that is exactly what I'm gonna do. $143 million. I'm never gonna be able to financially recover from this. Put it in a barn find? Oh my God, should I? Oh no. <laughs> What if I spend one billion credit and then give it all away? Yoink. <laughs> oh my god, this is such a dumb idea. And I've officially spent all of my money. 61 million credits is left in the bank. I'm going to a barn find. So I'm going to give this one to anybody. I'll give this one to new players. Welcome. I hope you enjoy it. This is such a dumb idea. Whoever actually actually gets one of these, you you better screenshot it and send it to me because I've just wasted so much money. This one can go to new Hall of Fame members. Congratulations. This final one can go to, let's give this one to new players as well. A car to give you an amazing start. I think that's a little bit of an understatement. <laughs> yeah, nice. All right. I've successfully given away one 
billion dollars worth of cars. I want to take this thing over and I want to do a little bit of a race with it. Sure, why don't we just go and do a point to point and I can tell you some not so fun facts. Mercedes-Benz 300 SLR. What is now sort of kind of the world's most expensive car, but what you probably didn't know about this thing is it actually holds another record. Because the other record that this car holds is um, basically the car crash with the most amount of deaths at one time. As the story goes, this thing was built for Le Mans. In 1955, Mercedes took a couple of these things to Le Mans. One of them famously driven by Sterling Moss. This story is about one of the other ones, not Sterling Moss's one. I think it was like lap 37 of Le Mans. One of these things crashed into an Austin Healey so fast and so badly the SLR took flight and killed 84 people, which is insane. It then injured a further 120 people, giving it the record for the deadliest car crash probably of all time. Like I said, a not so fun fact. It would have been really cool to actually get the Yulenhout Coupe version of this car instead of like the Le Mans racer. Don't get me wrong, this version of the car is really, really cool, but if the game does want to be authentic, the world's most expensive car is the Yulenhout Coupe and not this one. I know this car isn't going to be super fast, but I do want to check out the customization. I'm just saying, how sick would it have been if we could actually do like a body swap and swap on like that Yulenhout body? That would have been just unreal. Anyways, engine swaps for this thing. Of course you can toss a 2JZ into it, or a, a 6.2 liter V8. You cannot take the world's most expensive car and 2JZ swap it. It's not happening. We are also not swapping on all-wheel drive. It's not happening. One thing we can do is give it a rear wing, which might actually be worth it. In real life, they did sometimes put a rear wing on the back of the 300 SLR to give it more downforce and more braking capabilities, depending on what track they were racing on. But I think I want it to look really good, so we'll ignore that as well. I think where I want to spend a lot of time is here in the tires. Yes, I can get white walls. That is insane. That actually brings us down into B class, which is actually pretty cool. Maybe we get this thing to the top of B class and we just leave it there. I think that would be amazing. I think if Mercedes saw this, actually murder. I can't, I can't, I'm not doing it. No, 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 no. We'll get some upgraded brakes, give it some race suspension, sure. The seats look like picnic cloth. Bro, do not say that to the guy who just spent 143 mil on it. I could kind of make this like a Yulenhout coupe and just paint it silver like that. Maybe like a metallic silver, that could look kind of cool. What if I go like fully Mercedes silver? That's like the Yulenhout coupe. Very nice. A beautiful looking Mercedes, which is arguably slower than it was before. Oh, wow. Imagine rocking up in a Ferrari 250 GTO and thinking you've got the most expensive car in the room. What a pleb vehicle. I am saying that, and I'm technically not driving the Yulenhout Coupe, so um, I'm gonna gloss over that. It is kind of cool that the developers brought this back to the game and made it super expensive. Just saying, I would have loved to have seen, like, the world's most expensive cars accurately being displayed in the game. Like, I don't know if it's just me, but I would totally be okay with, like, a 250 GTO in the game costing 70 million bucks. What color is your Yulenhout? <laughs> I actually really like this in B-Class. Like the white wall tires allow a tiny bit more slip from the car. So when you're turning in, you've kind of got to be a bit more brave and a bit more confident with it. And I just, I find it really fun. So for those of you who don't know, this thing's already been in a bunch of previous Forza games. It's great to have it back for Forza Horizon 5, but like I've been saying, I wish it was the Yulenhout version and... Instead...